All right, so we are back to talk to you a little bit more about food. The big topic of discussion is how we heal using food. But before we do that, what we really want to encourage you guys or continue to encourage you guys to do is spend some time, scroll down, and just share with us what you're learning. Just leave a comment. That's all we want. Don't think about it. Overthink it. Leave a comment. All right. So in the last video, we kind of mentioned at the end, one of the biggest problems that we hear from people that we talk to. And I think it's basically paralysis, um, the fear of food, people losing faith in what food can do because there's so much out there. Because we have the web, we have bloggers, we have programs, we have e-courses. We have YouTube, you you go on and on and on, right? And it almost makes the journey of becoming healthy very unhealthy, right? Because we get so obsessive with what's going on. And the one thing that really is crazy for me in working with people is was what one, one of the things Josh says is that we've really lost our faith in food. And the funny thing is, is what we, we're talking about here, we're going to get into a little bit more in, in the next audio, is cellular energy. And that's really what's... What's driving all of our different systems, and we'll talk a little bit more about how diets are kind of designed to work with dysfunction in one system. And and again, we're kind of accomplishing one goal, yet not really targeting the effects of that long-term adaptive stress. Um, But, you know, again, going back, there's no debating that the purpose of eating food is to fuel your body. That is your food, your nutrition is the catalyst to every single function in your system. And what happens when we're broken down metabolically is we are now compromised in our ability to be able to retain our nutrition. So we've got so many different layers that we're working with, and we're going to help to kind of help you understand that. We're going to talk a little bit more to help you understand what that means. But I also think going back to the fear thing, most diets are set up to treat dysfunction. Right? You have a gut problem, there's a gut diet. You have a hormone problem, there's a hormone diet. But if you think about it, the body is a system of systems. You can't think about a food, and eat a food, and think it's just going to treat one system in the body. It's almost impossible. Right? So, the difference is, with what we're teaching you, is our system or way of eating is, it's not a diet. We're trying to teach people a sustainable way of eating, a lifestyle. Nutrition based on human physiology, right? Food that the body can actually break down. So what we're actually doing is we're treating the entire body with food instead of just one system. So I think that creates a lot of fear in people because what happens? They do the diet, they feel better, and they go back to their old way of eating or maybe an adaptive way of eating. What happens? They get some symptoms or all their symptoms back. Or think about it. How many of you have gone on a a supplement or a probiotic and you feel so much better? But the second you go off it, what happens? You actually feel worse again. It's because you're not treating the entire body or all the systems. You're just eliminating a symptom in one system. Now, when we talk about food, the solution is eating digestible, metabolic, metabolic foods. Food. And when we say that, most people are saying, well, we've heard that before, eat food, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go into a little bit of why we're recommending these specific foods. You know, just in a, in a, in a, just a little bit so you can understand, of course, in the next audio, you're going to understand, you're going to see through what we call cellular respiration why this food is actually so important for our system. It's kind of like, A diesel engine, right? I'm not a car guy, but a diesel engine needs diesel fuel, right? You can't put unleaded fuel in a diesel engine and won't work. Same thing for the human body. So we have three kind of macronutrients, carbs, proteins, fats. And we need carbohydrates for energy production. That's the bottom line. The problem is our society has gone so far left and so far right. We're eating a diet so, you know... um, High in, let's say, refined carbohydrates. You know, the grains, the pastas, the breads, the donuts, etc. Right? Creating so much hyperglycemia, which is basically causing diabetes, insulin resistance, 
uh, weight gain, PCOS, etc. But then on the other end of the spectrum, we have people that are just, you know, eating mostly vegetables for carbohydrates, like we're cows. You know, and our digestive system is not kind of made like a cow. Cows, uh, they're, they have four stomachs to break down cellulose, which is grass. That's what they're supposed to eat. So they can essentially eat grass to break it down. Of course, they can eat anything, but it creates a lot of inflammation. Same thing with the human body. Our, our, our system is not really meant to break down tons and tons of vegetables, right? So now we're eating foods that we can't break down. It's a huge burn on the system, but at the same time, we're not regulating our blood sugar. Remember, regulating your blood sugar is a huge aspect of creating homeostasis in the system. So what we're trying to do is find balance. What's that middle point? And the middle point is using fruits and roots, right? Tropical fruits or any fruit, any root. Basically, we call a squash a root. We could say starchy vegetable, squashes or anything below the ground, potatoes, tubers, etc. Mm -hmm. To simplify, the reason these are beneficial, fruits contain fructose and glucose, Right? So we have the refined carbohydrates, which contain 100% glucose, which spikes insulin. Then you have your leafy vegetables, which ha do nothing, really, so we don't get any blood sugar regulation. We don't get any sugar in the system. When we take in fruits and roots, it contains fructose and glucose. So what happens is we get a spike of insulin by glucose, but fructose inhibits that spike, so we get a regulation of blood glucose. At the same time, when our body is in a hypometabolic state, a stress state, survival mode, or running from a lion, it's been shown through much research that it's really hard for our body to get glucose into the cell. This is how we produce energy. This is how we convert thyroid hormone. This is how we live. This is how our furnace is fueled. So if we can't gluc get glucose in there, what happens? We end up with blood sugar handling issues. But when we eat fruit, not overeat fruit or just fruit, when we eat fruit with our food, what happens is now we're getting that additional fructose. What's well, been shown, fructose bypasses the inhibition and actually gets into, into the cell, revs the engine to get our body closer to homeostasis. So it's very beneficial. And somewhat the same thing with roots. It's a little bit different, but it, we could say it's kind of the same thing. Roots have a higher glucose to fructose content, so we have to be a little bit more careful. But they kind of do the same thing. But just to, just to let you know, with fruits, just make sure they're really ripe and roots overcook them. But the other make... thing about roots is that they are below the ground, so they do have a lot of antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal properties to them, where you're right. above the ground vegetables... Um, being exposed to the environment and whatnot kind of have to create their own pesticide <laughs> to some degree, which which main purpose is to destroy the digestive tract of any organism that consumes them. Right. And we're not trying to scare you around certain foods that, again, are really highlighted as being healthy. We're just teaching you that, again, based on where your system is, some of the challenges you may be facing with your health and metabolism, that we have to reconsider the foods that we're eating in order to heal. Right. And we have to find that balance and how to do it. It's not, it's nothing good, nothing bad, nothing right, nothing wrong, no black or white. It's again, and I'm saying it, balance. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's interesting to me. I would say 90% of the people I talk to is probably well as Jeannie too. They're afraid to eat fruit. They're uh -huh. afraid to eat fruit. I mean, I can't even wrap my head around it. Because everybody has told them that fruit is bad. And I think that's one of the bigger problems is with a lot of the studies that we're seeing that are identifying sugar as being bad. Are, we're not qualifying. We're not differentiating what sugars we're talking about. And sometimes it really is fruit because we're afraid of... Um, gut bacteria and overgrowth and candida and things like that and SIBO. But the reality of the situation is that's because it, that's a symptom of an imbalance in the metabolic system. And if you think about it, just think about it. I'm not going to go into it because I could spit out a bunch of research. But maybe you have SIBO or you have an adrenal dysfunction because you're not eating fruit to regulate your gut bacteria and blood sugar and thyroid hormone production. So just to be clear, again, that doesn't mean go start eating a ton of fruit that you haven't eaten in a long time. Because Balance. I think we discussed last time right. that 
you are still sensitive to sugar. There is a reason why people are pulling back on sugar because their systems are so reactive to it because the body has kind of forgotten how to metabolize it. Right. So, you know, think about balance. Maybe just adding some in here and there and just getting a feel for it. And, and that's really what we're saying. And okay? the difference, again, in what we're doing is we're creating, we're, we're coming into relationship with the body and really identifying how is it functioning from a metabolic point of view and what do we need to consider about our ability to digest? What are we considering about our ability to regulate our blood sugar, our ability to store our energy? Those are the things we have to think about right. when we're choosing our foods as we create, and you've heard me say it before, the environment for healing to happen. Right. Because I call SIBO self-induced bacterial overgrowth <laughs> because it is. Now, let's talk about proteins. It's pretty simple with proteins. Most people that we talk to eat chicken and they eat chicken, and they eat chicken, right? It's the most common protein people are eating. Or, I have to be honest, most of my clients that I'm working with, I don't know if this is the same for you, Jeannie, but they log so I can see a baseline, and they're under-eating protein so much. And the problem is, protein is just as important. Because we use protein for repair and regeneration, but also our liver uses healthy proteins for uh, detoxification of uh, different uh, toxins as well as estrogen. Your, now, your protein is all your hormones, it's your enzymes, it's your muscles, it's your tissues, it's everything. Right. So we need those building blocks. And again, if you're not getting them and your body's mm -hmm. in inflammation, it's breaking it down and it's not receiving it back. So there's a continuous breakdown happening. But once again, inflammation. It, it, right, it's finding that balance because if you're overeating it, you're creating inflammation. Right, but if you're under eating, creating inflammation, we go a lot more into that in our programs and coaching. Yeah, it gets but specific. When it comes to proteins, we're thinking non-inflammatory. We're thinking power proteins: homemade bone broth, gelatin, you know, eggs, dairy, shellfish, whitefish, and liver. Right now, we're not saying you have to have these foods because most people go on. <gasps> Oh my God, he said dairy. I cannot believe he said dairy. I have a dairy intolerance. Well, then don't use it. You know, most of the time, people that can't tolerate dairy, it's not dairy's fault. It's the body we're putting it into. We don't have the enzymes. We're not producing the enzymes, lactase in our small intestine, to break down lactose. So we think about proteins, right? We have the power proteins. And then we have the second we could say proteins or, you know, proteins that are okay, which are muscle meats, like venison, beef, buffalo, etc. And then our third choice, which would be like, you know, chicken, um, pork, poultry, 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 things like that. And the reason being is we're looking at what's in them and what is not in them. So when we look at power proteins, what's in them, lots of minerals, Things like selenium, which our liver uses for thyroid hormone production, etc. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of healing properties to them. But what's not in them are things like tryptophan that's in your muscle meats, etc. Which in excess causes inflammation in our system. Not only in our system, but at the cellular level, which is very important. And we'll talk about in the next audio. So again, with the power of proteins, another thing we like them, not only with their, because of their nutrient content, but because their abil the body's ability to break it down. Again, they're very, very, a lot easier to digest right. than your muscle meats. And we have to understand that under a compromised system, we are not producing digestive enzymes and absorbing our food the way that, or as efficiently as we can be. So we don't want to burden the system even further. That doesn't mean you can't have muscle meats. It just means that we have to, again, consider what body we're putting them into, and that's going to dictate how much or how frequently we consume those. Right. And then how we do it. Right. So the proteins, it's about what's not in them, but also what's in them that actually can benefit at the cell level. And that's what we're thinking about, energy and blood sugar. And getting enough of them. So again, right. just like I said on the carbohydrates, you can't go from zero to 100 because you don't have the ability, the enzymes, to break those heavier proteins down. If you double your protein intake in a week, you're going to be really slow. Right, you've got to go slow. Health is not a destination. It's a journey. Yes. Embrace it. And the slower it, you go, right. the more successful you're going to be and the less stress you're going to be putting on your body. Now, with the fats, we're talking about saturated fat, right? We're talking about coconut oil which is very, 
very, very important for our system in order to produce steroidal hormones, reduce inflammation in our system. You know, it contains different things like lauric acid, which help to regulate our blood sugar even more. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And we use things like butter, ghee, um, olive oil, etc. You know, and the main difference with us as well with fats is we want to increase the amount of saturated fat, healthy saturated fat, and reduce the amount of unsaturated fat that someone is taking in. Not eliminate it, but reduce it. And that's why we don't say, we say light fish, not fatty fish. And that's why we didn't say nuts and seeds and things like that. Because most people get their fats from nuts and seeds and nut and seed oils, which unfortunately the excess intake of those unsaturated fats are inhibitory to the thyroid, 100% at the cellular level, and of course, if you want to learn more about that, we go that we go in way more depth than our metabolic blueprint online program. So that's that's a but it's an important right. It's a, an important conversation to understand for sure. So if we really recap, but we're talking about fruits and roots. We're talking about. Non-inflammatory or inflammatory proteins. I, I mean, inflammatory proteins, it's pretty simple because all proteins are good. You just have to look at what you're taking in, but also where is it coming from? What's the source? What is this animal actually eating, right? What, what it should eat versus what is it eating? And it will matter, and I'm going to say this over and over and over again, where you stand metabolically. That's a, that's a big deal right there. So um, just keeping that in mind as you do maybe kind of explore some of these different foods that we're considering. And I think, you know, as we're breaking this down and we're talking about dairy and we're talking about muscle meat and we're talking about saturated fats and we're talking about fruits and starches and all these foods that everyone's telling you not to eat. <laughs> but think about it. I always <laughs> tell my clients this or potential people we talk to all over the world and they say, well, you know, I have SIBO, I have, you know, PMS, I can't sleep, I have fibromyalgia, I have infertility, I have et cetera, et cetera. And they're not eating these foods. I don't just, and they're afraid. And I say, well, how's it working for you? How is what you're doing working for you? And you need to ask yourself that. Now, and this brings us to a really good point. Because the problem is people don't realize what they're doing isn't really working for them. And they're now when we talk about these foods, they're really afraid to actually eat them. They're afraid, they're afraid of them, literally afraid of them, because they think it's going to cause disease. But if they really look at where they're at, what they're doing is creating dysfunction. We've been very conditioned, and I think it was a Diane Schwartz one that was talking about there being something like 847,000 different books on health on the market, and yet we are one of the most diseased right. nations in the world. And, you know, we've had, we've seen the kind of the, the sequence of events that has occurred from taking sugars out of the diet from taking good fats out of the diet and the onset of heart disease and, and, and diabetes and all these chronic conditions are just getting worse and worse and worse. And yes, we're getting busier and busier and busier environmentally, which is speeding up how we're doing everything. And we're not taking the time to take care of ourselves so it's um so in the next audio what we're going to talk about which correlates exactly with Je with what Jeannie was saying is we're going to talk about this problem of why we're so afraid why we're so conditioned why we're so afraid of these metabolic foods but what they can actually do for our system at the cellular level yes